time right here on the Swickley Public Library YouTube channel. I'm Mrs. Barmory and I'm so glad you can join me today. I would like to thank Abrams Publishing, HarperCollins Publishing, and Lee and Lowe Publishers for their permission to read their books to you today. Is everyone ready to say hello? Let's sing our hello song. This song involves some signs. The first sign is hello and friends. We take our pointer fingers and we give each other a hug. Here we go. Hello friends, hello friends, hello friends. It's time to say hello friends. Great job everyone. Alrighty friends, today we're going to read three books all about buildings and our STEM crafts today are going to be all about building structures. Is everyone ready to get started? Our first book today is Iggy Pack Architect, written by Andrea Beatty and illustrated by David Roberts. This is a great book all about building. Iggy Pack Architect. Young Iggy Pack is an architect and has been since he was two when he built a great tower in only an hour with nothing but diapers and glue. Good gracious, Ignatius, his mother exclaimed. That's the coolest thing I've ever seen. But her smile faded fast as a light wind blew past and she realized those diapers weren't clean. Ignatius, my son, what on earth have you done? That's disgusting, it's nasty, it stinks. But Iggy was gone, he was out on the lawn using dirt clogs to build a great sphinx. When Iggy was three, his parents could see his unusual passion would stay. He built churches and chapels from peaches and apples and temples of modeling clay. At dinner one night to his father's delight, Iggy got a bright gleam in his eye. And out on the porch, he built the St. Louis Arch from pancakes and coconut pie. Dear Ig had made it until second grade when his teacher was Miss Lila Greer. On the very first day, she had this to say, we do not talk of buildings here. Gothic or Romanesque, I couldn't care less about buildings ancient or new. She said in her lecture about architecture that it had no place in grade two. That might seem severe, but she was sincere for when she was no more than seven. She had a great fright at a dizzying height in a building so tall it scraped heaven. On an architecture tour of the 95th floor, young Lila got lost from the group. She was found two days later, stuck in an elevator, eating cheese with a French circus troupe. After that day, it was quite safe to say she thought building lovers were nuts. As a teacher, she taught that above all, one ought to avoid them, no ands, ifs, or buts. As you might guess, it caused Iggy stress to hear such terrible talk. But he didn't hear, he sat in the rear while building castles of chalk. You, Iggy Peck, your desk is a wreck. Tear down that castle right now. You will not build it here, is that perfectly clear? Do you need to see Principal Howe? No, ma'am, Iggy said. He lowered his head. His heart sank down to the floor. With no chance to build, his interest was killed, and now second grade was a bore. After 12 long days, passed in a haze of reading, writing, and arithmetic, Miss Greer took the class to the Blue River Pass for a hike and an old-fashioned picnic. They crossed an old trestle to a small island nestled in the heart of a burbling stream. But as soon as they passed, then that footbridge collapsed and Miss Greer started to scream. Oh, we're trapped here. Oh my, alas, kids, goodbye. Her eyeballs rolled back in her head. She dropped to the ground with a big groaning sound. Luckily, fainted not dead. The class was amazed. They stood there quite dazed, uncertain of what they should do. But one young bright man was off hatching a plan which started with Miss Lila's shoes. Soon each lad and lass there at Blue River Pass was working together as one. When she came to, Miss Lila Greer knew that something quite brave had been done. 
She looked in the air and saw hanging there a structure with cables and braces. And on the far side, beaming with pride, were 17 young smiling faces. Boots, tree roots, strings, fruit roll-ups, and things, some of which not, should not be mentioned, were stretched ridge to ridge in a glorious bridge, dangling from shoestring suspension. It all became clear to Miss Lila Greer as she crossed over the stream. There are worse things to do when you're in grade two than to spend time building a dream. And now every week at Blue River Creek Elementary in second grade, all the school kids can hear along with Miss Greer how the world's greatest buildings were made. The weekly guest speaker in t-shirt and sneakers talks of buildings from Rome to Quebec. Of course, he's the guy who builds towers from pie, that brilliant young man, Iggy Peck. Iggy Peck, architect. In this month's STEM bag, our crafts are all about building. First, we'll be starting off with our Marshmallow Toothpick STEM Challenge. We'll be needing the small bag with the little cards and the marshmallows and the toothpicks. Our second challenge is the Marshmallow Catapult. This one's really super fun because you get to make hot cocoa and try to get your marshmallows into your hot cocoa. Our final challenge this month will be the Strawby Building Challenge. You'll be receiving a bag of straws with connectors and an instruction sheet. Let's get started. For our first challenge, the toothpick challenge, you will need the Toothpick STEM Challenge Instruction Booklet and the bag with the toothpicks, marshmallows, and the Shape STEM Challenge cards. The first thing you're going to do is sort out all of your supplies for the challenge. I suggest sorting the marshmallows and the toothpicks into their own containers. It'll make it easier to do the challenge. You will also need a pencil for this challenge. I'm going to start to build the triangle. The first thing I'm going to do is take a toothpick and stick marshmallows on either end of the toothpick. I'm going to set it down. I'm going to take another toothpick and put a marshmallow on the toothpick and connect it to my first toothpick. For this shape, I will just need one more toothpick. And here I have my triangle. To complete our challenge card, we need to write down the number of sides for our shape. For the triangle, there are three sides, one, two, three. We also need to count the vertices. The vertices are the corners of our shape. For the triangle, this is easy. There are three vertices, one, two, three. And we would write that on our challenge card. Once you complete all the two-dimensional challenges, you start on the three-dimensional challenges, and these ones are a little tricky, friends, so take your time and go slow. I found that it was easiest if I pre-made a couple toothpicks with marshmallows on it before I did my shape. Parents, in the back of the booklet, there is an answer key for the 2D and 3D shapes, so you'll know how many edges and vertices and sides are on each shape. Alrighty friends, our next building book is Build Dogs Build, A Tall Tale, written and illustrated by James Horvath. Build Dogs Build, A Tall Tale. Get moving crew, we're heading downtown, an old building there needs to come down. Time to get rolling, Duke just got a call, load up the bulldozer and big wrecking ball. Here's the building all crumbled and cracked. We'll knock it down quick with a couple of whacks. The crane is in place, the angle's correct. Get the ball swinging now, wreck dogs, wreck. Boom. With a boom, the ball sails right through the wall. Stand clear now, the building's starting to fall. The bulldozer clears away piles of rubbles and bricks and concrete without any trouble. The dump truck hauls off the load after load, fill it to the top, then head down the road. Quick work, dogs. The site is all clear. Now set up the barricades and unpack the gear. 
Grab a fast snack from the dog in the van while Duke, the foreman, double checks the plan. Start digging the trenches to run all the pipes for water and drains, many sizes and types. Head down in the tunnel to secure the connection and be sure it runs in the proper direction. Grab the shovels and rakes. There's concrete to pour. This building's going to need a ground floor. Yard after yard is poured into place 10 inches thick. It's a mighty strong base. Here comes the steel. Unload it right here, ton after ton. Builds tier after tier. These giant red girders look exactly the same. Let's weld them together and build a tall frame. The, the iron team is working a high flying breed, welding and riveting with great skill and speed. Look out dogs, watch for that glass. Oh no, too late, the truck's gonna crash. Balls bouncing up, balls bouncing down, balls, 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 flying all over town. Let's take a quick break and a well-deserved stretch. While we gather the balls, we can fetch dogs fetch. The excitement is over. We've all had fun, but there's still miles of pipe and wires to run. Electricians and plumbers and carpenters too. Each one of them has his own job to do. This building is bare with strong bones for steel. We'll need mortar and bricks and concrete and stone. The beams go up fast, building room upon room as the pumper pumps liquid cement through its boom. This crew is the best. Each dog is highly skilled. Let's keep building higher. Build, dogs, build. The windows are lifted and swung through the air, then fastened and fitted and set with great care. The finish work starts and there's more to install. The windows and stairs, ceilings and walls lights and fixtures and doors to pass through, kitchens and bedrooms, and a bathtub or two. In comes the paint team to color the walls, red for the doors and blue for the halls. This building is finished. It turned out quite well. Bark Avenue, the last thing to do, install the doorbell. The penthouse is perfect, complete with a view. There's even a terrace with a pool for the crew. Great job, dogs. Our work is all through. Tomorrow we're off. There's a new job to do. Build dogs, build. For our next STEM challenge, we'll be making a marshmallow catapult. We will need the marshmallow catapult instruction booklet and the marshmallow catapult craft bag. You will find nine popsicle sticks, some marshmallows, rubber bands, a plastic spoon, and some hot cocoa. For this craft, you will need a pencil to write down all of your data points. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna collect seven popsicle sticks and take a rubber band around each end. And just put the rubber band onto the popsicle sticks, just like this. Repeat on the second side. And it may have to go around the popsicle stick several times, friend, because it needs to be really tight. There's step one. We've completed steps one and two. Next, we take two more popsicle sticks and one rubber band, wrap it around the end of the rubber band or the end of the popsicle sticks. And we're gonna have to wrap these ones around a lot. Make sure they're nice and tight. Step three is completed. For step four, we'll take our seven popsicle sticks that are already bound together and our two popsicle sticks that are bound together. We're going to open those up carefully and we're going to slide in the popsicle sticks just like this. For step five, we'll take a rubber band and we are going to wrap it around the popsicle sticks that are open and the popsicle sticks that are stuck together. And we're going to try to make an X. And friends, this is a little tricky, even for Mrs. Farmery, so it may take some time. That step was a little tricky, 
but once you get your rubber band on securely, it'll make an X right on the front of the popsicle sticks. Now we're going to attach the spoon to our catapult. We'll need the plastic spoon and two more rubber bands. And again, this step is a little tricky, but I know you can do it. You just wrap this, the rubber band around the popsicle stick and the handle of the spoon until it's on securely. Once you get your first rubber band on, put your second rubber band on. Once you've attached the spoon onto your catapult, we'll have completed step six. Now that you've completed your catapult, you can put it on the table and take some of the marshmallows, put in the little spoon and flick away. You can adjust the spoon on your catapult, maybe make it closer and pull it further away to see if the marshmallow will go further. Whoa! Now you're ready for the hot chocolate. Make your hot chocolate and put it in a mug. Any mug will do. And then flick your marshmallow into the hot chocolate. Whoa! Mine, of course, is not getting there but that's because we're filming. You can move your catapult further or closer depending on how you think it will get the marshmallow into the hot chocolate. For this portion of the activity, you will need a pencil and a ruler. You can move the cup closer or further away and you can note it on your data sheet. If you make your shot into the cup, you can also note that on your data sheet. You can change things up with your catapult and you write it down. When you get it in, that's when you know your catapult is good to go. After you drank your hot cocoa and completed your data sheet, you can talk about why things may have worked or why things didn't work with the post questionnaire. This is a really good way to discuss with your child the project and how things might have gone better or if they went fantastic, you can put that down there too. Our next book is Dreaming Up, A Celebration of Building by Christy Hale. Dreaming Up, A Celebration of Building. Cup on cup, stacking up, smaller, smaller, and growing taller. Earth and water, sun and air, all around, everywhere. Cold and wet, hot and dry, mixed together, make mud pie. Open the top and in I hop. Poke out a square to see who's there. Pull in the flap to hide from view. Can you see me? I see you. Blankets flung, stretch chair to chair. Soft roof arches low, a cozy place to hide away where you and I can go. Touch wood, fingers learn each form, hang on shapes, air, explore new directions, every block anchored with care. Fluid with water, towers twist high, sparkle with sea glass, treasures and shells. Sandcastle. One by one, block by block, plastic shapes interlock. Yellow, red, white, and black connect in a stack. Build a world brick by brick, hold them close, hear the click. Paper thin cards slice through space, lean, brace, hold still, this moment of balance. Easy peasy, as can be, toothpicks joining, one, two, three. Sticks touch like fingertips, reach high where wishes roam, cupped between is magic space in a forest fairy home. Balls of snow, bags of land, bend down low, fill your hand, pack them, stack them, circle round, Dome is home is built on ground. Paper tubes, stiff reused, anything does the trick. Tape or glue for strength and you have raised a building quick. 
flat wooden sticks stuck with glue, gaps in between where sun peeks through. Solid then open, dark then bright, shifting patterns, flickering light. Slats and slits standing side by side, adding together, build round and wide. An open floor, inviting space, welcome door to popsicle place. Add together, building round and wide, slats and slits standing side by side. Shifting patterns, flickering light, solid then open, dark then bright. Gaps in between where sun peeks through, flat wooden sticks stuck with glue. Soft forms tumble, making ever-changing caves, secret spaces, pillow forts. This is my favorite page of the book. On this page, the author shows us all of the fantastic buildings she has used to demonstrate the different forms of building throughout the book. Dreaming Up, a celebration of building. For our final STEM challenge, we'll be doing the Straw Bees build. For this challenge, you will need the Straw Bees packet and the bag of the Straw Bees. What are Straw Bees? I'm glad you asked. They are straws. They're a little bit harder than regular drinking straws and they are a little bit longer. They also include little connectors that you can build shapes with. Let's get started. For some of these projects, you will need to cut the straws. For this, you will just need child scissors. All you do is you take a straw and you measure it to the right size and snip. In your strawby packet, you will find instructions for several shapes. The first of which is the pyramid. And this is the shape I'm going to show you how to build today. For the pyramid, we will need six blue straws and four green connectors. The first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna look at the instruction sheet and kind of see what it wants us to do. We're gonna take our blue straw and connect it with a green connector. And then it tells us to take the blue straw and make the other connection. So your straws should look just like this and just build along with the direction sheet. Once you have put all of the straws in the connectors together and it looks very similar to what it looks like on the instruction sheet, you start to bend the connectors and connect the straws together. And slowly and surely, you will get a pyramid. And the pro tip here is to definitely bend the connectors as you are connecting the straws into each other. And now you've made a pyramid with your straw bees. Get creative, use as many color straws and as many connectors as you'd like. The more shapes you build, the better you'll get. Maybe you can put them all together at the end and see what type of crazy shapes you come up with. I hope you enjoy this. I hope everyone had fun building all of their STEM challenges today. Have fun with your marshmallows and your strawbies, and don't forget to drink your hot cocoa. Join us next month for another STEM story time.